Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And today we're gonna to talk about interactive reference documents. And I know we've talked about reference documents in the past, but I think it's really worth bringing up again. Because if you were to say scuba diver to me, this is what I might think of. But in reality, a scuba diver has all kind of specific shapes and real world gear. And I just don't know that much about scuba divers. So if I had to draw one, I would probably compile a interactive document like this one. And the reason I say it's interactive is because it's a bunch of different images, each on their own layer. And you'll notice each of my objects has been converted into a smart object. So that means I grab these images off of Google Image Search or Flickr, or any number of sources. But then once I put them in my Photoshop document, I declared them as smart objects, which means I can shrink them, confirm that transformation, and then later bring them back to a large size, and it's not lossy. They don't get pixelated. So once you've created a document like this, I find it's most useful if you're good at keyboard shortcuts, because then you almost have a big desk with a bunch of photos that you can shuffle around. So say right now I wanted to look at the mask. Well, that's on its own layer. So if I hold down the control key while using the move tool, it'll automatically select the layer. So you can see I can jump around the layer stack by simply clicking the control key while using the move tool. So if I wanted to have this mask on the top of the stack, so it would be in front of things and not behind them, I'd use the move to front command. So this is simply the control and bracket keys. You can move your layers up and down the stack. And because I've got a smart object, I could even make it really big temporarily. And I'd just be looking at the mask and the other stuff would be lesser important. Now, some people will just keep a big folder full of images on their hard drive and that's fine. But I find that this kind of document where I can look at different things and add to it and subtract from it, I find that it's just more useful. And when I'm gathering these images, I really like to get things from manufacturers' websites. Because if you see here, these are very well lit. They're very easy to see the details. And in fact, these aren't even in context. This is just like I've gone window shopping, only instead of buying things, I've put them into my reference document. And this just means that it's very clear reference. When I go to add this to my own illustration, I can see all the details. Nothing's covered in deep shadow. Although sometimes it's nice to get sort of in context shots like this one, where you can see all the pieces put together. But of course, what you give up is a little bit of clarity. For instance, it's hard to see what the vest he's wearing does. And just like my scuba diver one, this is about Arctic weather gear. There's a little bit of ice climbing, some cold weather exploration gear, and, you know, cool helmets and sunglasses and stuff. All these little details are things that you just wouldn't think of on your own. So your assignment is to think of a couple professions, like ice climber or scuba diver or fireman, and put together specific reference sheets. And if you want to use my interactive method with smart objects, that's great, but you don't need to. The important part is to gather specific detailed gear. What do their shoes look like? Do they have special watches or belts? So in a way, gathering reference is its own sort of art form. These are the kind of details that are going to really bring interest into your illustrations. So good luck finding your reference material. Now, if you liked the video, make sure to click the like button at the bottom of the post. I'm counting on you guys to spread the word. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.